Hi there, this is Self Critical Automaton, and this is the latest episode of my Let's Play of Bayonetta. Um, this is the first proper chapter of the game that, you know, presents the pattern of the chapters that we'll be following throughout the rest of the game. As you can see, it's chapter one, rather than the prologue chapter that we did last time. So let's get right into it. So, I asked around, and some whale in Europe is trying to fence a huge rock on the black market. He calls it the right eye, saying it's part of some set called the eyes of the world. Fits the bill of what you're after, don't it? Now, here's the funny bit. The stone passes around the halls of power for hundreds of years, vanishes, and then the black market goes white hot for the thing. But the seller wanted an arm and a leg for it, to the point no one could stomach the price. So back goes the stone but not before everyone figures out where the guy is. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy doing this one, I bet. I love sticking it to the rich. Of course, when you do, don't forget your old buddy Enzo stuck his neck out on this one. Slide me a few fuzzles out of the rich guy's pocket for my troubles, right? Anyways, you better get going before the trail gets cold. Off to the middle of nowhere. Paradise of Europe. <laughs> Welcome to Big Red. Our final stop. Entry visas are required at all travel stops. Please submit your Big Red issued entry visa for inspection upon disembarking. Please make sure you take all your valuable belongings with you. Repeating this message. Hmm. So, this is supposed to be paradise? So yeah, this is the first part of the actual game that we get to play that's not kind of cutscenes with occasional bits in between. Uh, there's also all these droppable items. Fortunately, it'll only give us the splash page about them once. Cured within a crystallized block, baked gecko is a concocting compound used by witches. It is useless by itself. Hey, me too. Um... Yeah, so there's a few of these. Mandragora root. Cured via crystallization, mandragora root is a concocting compound used by witches. It is useless by itself. I guess it just says that for all of them. Yep. So, there's lots of breakable objects in the exploration parts of these levels, but um, there's a reason why I'm smashing everything here at the start. There's actually a secret, which is kind of um, illuminating a butterfly-shaped gem that contains magical power in crystalline form. Revives one's magical power when obtained. Uh, it's kind of telling with regards to the, the game as a whole. Um, what was this say? Signboard aimed at tourists, pointing out the locations of the remaining ancient ruins in Vigrid. Vigrid security forces. Security guards in the middle of nowhere. They have awfully impressive weapons. Can they hear me? Yeah, they can. So... Already it's interesting because it's got this split between the um, the human world, which is ostensibly where we are, and Purgatorio, which is the kind of in-between realm. What's this? Resident of Vigrid. It may be a part of their religious doctrine, but everyone wears holy vestments. As long as I'm in Purgatorio, I won't be able to intervene in their affairs. But that also means I should be able to get around the place without their interference either. So, 
Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so the game kind of has this... Well, let's take that previous cutscene that we just saw. In that cutscene with Enzo talking, it implies kind of a very different game than the one you end up playing. He gives this uh, briefing all about where you'll be going and what you'll be doing, and it implies that there's some kind of uh, intrigue going on. You're going to sneak in, I guess, and take by force this gem that you're looking for. The gem is what you're trying to get, that's your main objective. And if somebody owns it and you're trying to take it from them, fair enough. Uh, I've played tons of games that have that sort of thing. I expect we'll be going to some kind of mansion, sneaking or fighting our way in, stealing the artifact or whatever. But no, none of that is there. Uh, it kind of completely sets that up and then just goes and does its own thing. And that kind of setup is inappropriate to the kind of game that it is. Because what it is, is... <laughs> There's a lot of is's in that sentence. Anyway, it is exactly the same as all of the other kind of um, character action brawlers, as they're usually called, I think. In that, design-wise, the game is split up into short, linear exploration segments where there are secrets and collectibles to be found, but a pretty pretty linear path without much, you know, variation or diversity in where you go and what you do. And then, along that path, there are various combat encounters. That's it. That's what the game is. Um, but one of the ways that they try and sneak things in is uh, by hiding secrets, and... Almost all of these kinds of games, you know, your Devil May Cries is, your... I can't think of any other examples, but there are a bunch of other examples in the genre. So, one of these secrets is if you smash all of the benches, the train will leave. And if you ride on the train, then uh, you get a whole bunch of bonus rings, or halos, I guess. And also, it drops one of these. These are one of the two upgrade materials in the game. There are broken moon pearls, and if you get two of those you get more magic power, and there are broken witch hearts. And if you get two of those you get more hit points. Surprising nobody, I guess, because that's pretty common. Um, but yeah, it has all of the trappings of, of that kind of genre while also looking and behaving, well, looking very much like a different kind of game. It's unusual to have realistically rendered humans in a kind of a run around, smash things, crash bandicoot, super mario, 3d platformy sort of sense. So it's really interesting to see these animations applied to this kind of um, character model. Security systems activation has put the whole area on alert. Uh, it's also worth noting the architecture. Oh, sorry, no, hang on. I was talking about the design and stuff. Uh, the sphere embedded in the wall emits a wondrous light. And oh my god, I'm going to read all of these. I don't. I don't think I am. Most of them are really boring anyway, so I'm just going to stop reading these now. So the, um, oh, it's also worth smashing almost everything anyway, because the upgrade materials, they, well, the crafting materials they drop are really useful, uh, frequently. And on every level, one item, as far as I can tell, it is just one item, when smashed will drop a collectible resource thing that are useful, um, at the end of the level. So, yeah. The, uh, the thing about the puzzly exploration-y, find-stuff-y things, is that in a game as linear as this, there's not really anywhere to hide things, which means that um, they end up relying heavily, not necessarily in these games generally, but in Bayonetta specifically, at least, they rely very heavily on uh, backtracking, which I don't know about you, but I find incred incredibly tedious. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with backtracking, but when there's no indication when you should and shouldn't backtrack, and there is only very occasionally something to backtrack for, um, expecting you to backtrack to find secrets is just really irritating. There's lots of part there's lots of parts of these levels where you can't go back after a certain point, and there's no indication that 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 um, kind of delineation exists. Therefore, there's no obvious way to see that you should go back. So you either check everything constantly, or you just accept that you missed stuff. A voyage towards the truth. I've been a journalist now for over 20 years, always aiming for the guiding light of truth, always pushing forward. I've believed that communicating the truth is the core tenet of all journalism, chasing it until my legs turn into rubber and the truth is burned into my retinas. But my journalistic career has hit an incredible wall, and I must confess that I have been crushed under the weight of the path I have travelled. It all began upon seeing beyond the stone-chiselled history of the old European city of Vigrid, and past the deep scars that time had left behind. The passing of history has always been overseen by a select few, and they have left memories of a time stained with blood. 
This fact is integral in understanding the big picture, but it also causes one to hesitate before becoming involved in such a dark history. Treading down this path I believe so firmly in means that I cannot afford to lose faith in my convictions. It may also mean that my life is put into jeopardy. However, I hold deep within my heart the hope that even after my soul has left this body... Wow, this guy likes long sentences. As long as these notes, my proof of being, are passed into the right man, future ages will also come to know the truth. They say that some things come at the cost of your life, but to me, truth is my life. In this age full of lies and deception, I will forever pray that truth will shine its light on the path of righteousness. Antonia Redgrave. So these are just little documents that give backstory as you, and explain some mechanics as well as you go through. Yep, I'm not going to be bothered. I can't be bothered to read all of those. I'm just going to read the uh, important um, document things. So this is the latest of these. Anyway, so the huge just irritation factor of not knowing when you can... Uh, safely expect to find something and when you're just backtracking for no reason is irritating as hell to me. Mm, it's a shame I got hit. Oh well. I really like the seal breaking animation by the way. The spooky hands is very good. I say as if I'm complimenting the game to its face. Oh hi hi piece of software. I really I really like the way you have that animation. It looks great. That's pretty bad meter, I'm not going to lie. So this is a recurring puzzle element, and it's probably the first one that we've seen. Uh, and it's basically just something that automatically gives you a countdown and a chance to be hit so that you can dodge it, so that you can go into slow-mo, so that you can do stuff like, you know, get through crushing blocks or whatever before you get smashed. So I guess this is the first of those puzzle elements, because there was one of these doors a little way back. Periodically you find these and you have to hit them with, you know, witchy power attacks in order to trigger them and make them do things. But we're actually going to jump straight back over here first. Also note that, like, the physics and animations when you're underwater are almost exactly the same. She does not swim, she just falls like a stone. And is that some kind of a reference to the old belief that if you drown a witch, like, or if you put a witch in water, she sinks instead of floats? You know, witch trialy type stuff? Or is that just some kind of... It was easier to design it this way. Anyway, this is, as I was saying, uh, you know, hidden here. When you backtrack, it wasn't here 30 seconds ago. You turn around, you come back, here it is. This is the first of the um, optional bonus challenge rooms. I should be able to beat this one on my first try, but I'm still going to stop talking and <laughs> record afterwards. So every one of these challenge rooms has different parameters under which you have to succeed at your combat. There's uh, there's always a time limit and there's always a limited number of hits you can take and um, they're useful in a lot of ways because they kind of recontextualize aspects of the game's mechanics or at least its combat mechanics. It encourages you to sort of experiment with the system to find ways to manipulate them in order to actually succeed at these quite difficult challenges. Most of them are quite difficult. This one's not especially. Um, the, the parameter is simply that you have three minutes to beat all these guys without taking more than five hits and only hurting them in witch time. Uh, in fact, if you hit them outside of witch time, you just get staggered backwards, which is really inconvenient. It's um, a pretty easy opener to the thing. Um, there's a neat trick you can do, which is that if you start a torture attack at the end of which time it still lasts into the uh, normal time afterwards. So yeah, some of these will be so difficult I can't beat them and some of them won't be that difficult at all, but the most irritating thing about this particular kind of challenge, because there's only about six different kinds of these challenges and then the details just change, like the number of hits you can take for example. Um, the most irritating thing about this one is that, well, if you uh, need to go into witch time to harm them, then you need to wait for them to do an attack for you to dodge. Which means that there's lots of moments like this, where you are standing around waiting for them to attack so that you can dodge it, so that you can harm them. Which can be kind of frustrating because their AI is, you know, somewhat randomised. You find yourself sitting around and all they do is flap up and down or switch weapons from, you know, swords to bows and... Come on, just give me an attack. Give me something I can dodge. And of course, some attacks are much easier to dodge than others. Um, 
there's a lot of mechanics that are unique to these Alfheim portal bonus challenges, but I will talk about those as and when they show up, I think, rather than that, because I'm running out of time! Well, I didn't do terribly there. Um, ideally, I'd like to have been hit a few fewer times, but still, I think I did good. And that's our first completed Moon Pearl. Every time you complete one of these bonus challenges, you get a, uh, an upgrade item, and uh, or part of one, I guess. And um, also just take a note of the scenery here, because that's going to become relevant later. I cannot remember what I was talking about before this challenge, so I'm just going to move on and talk about the architecture of Vigrid. Oh wait, no, I do remember. I was talking about what a pain in the ass it is to keep having um, uh, backtracking. Um, like... It's an easy... It's a really easy way to extend the amount of time it takes to complete a level and to... It's a really easy way to hide a secret. You don't need to program anything in. All you need to do is have a single trigger so that as soon as, you know, the player character passes a certain point, something appears behind them in the level. But without some kind of signposting to indicate that it is worth backtracking um, after a certain point, it's just really irritating. At least to me personally as a player. Uh, you know, but it is a lot easier as a developer to implement backtracking as a primary mechanic of finding secrets because you do just, you know, not have to code in other triggers or like animations for secret thingies opening or whatever, but there are actually some of those later in the game, so, you know, who knows. How sinister. Hey, it's that guy. I knew it. This town's teeming with heaven's little helpers. It's making my buddies downstairs awfully nervous. And your point is? Some places in this world are closer to Paradiso or Inferno. The rat hole of the town you and I live in is close to both. But the Vigridians, they got a special air about them. They're closer to Paradiso than anyone should ever be. And that shit just plain creeps me out. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to set up shop here and score me some halos. These stupid rings are worth a fortune back home. Since it seems you're spoiling for a fight, if you come across any of these, bring them to me, and I'll hook you up. <sighs> Another one looking to line his pockets. <laughs> I'm beginning to see why Enzo is so fond of you. Real cute. But let's get one thing straight. Your fights are yours alone. I'm only here to watch my handiwork in action. So don't get any bright ideas about coming to me for help. No. You get one thing straight. I'm not the slightest bit interested in the fact that you made these guns. Oh, nothing about this is straight. If you get in my way, I will... How do the Americans put it? Oh, yes. Bust a cap in your ass. Right on, baby. Right on. <laughs> a lot of the dialogue in this game is entertainingly overwrought, and while I don't like the, um performance uh, that the actress brings to the main character for the most part I, I think it's a little bit I think she's a good actress but I don't think this is the right role for her there's a kind of like a lack of a sort of a sexual drawl to it or at least she's trying to put that in but it just doesn't fit her style or her voice she should be more you know languid more um yeah let's go with languid anyway uh what was I saying yeah, that, uh, generally speaking, I, qu I like how ridiculous and overwrought the writing is, even if the performance isn't always great, but that line's a real clanger. Uh, like, that's just not... nobody says that, come on. Um, I'm just going to check out these real quick. The rail guide for the only mode of transportation. Just because I think these are nice, uh, nice little bits of background detail. They're pleasant, uh, pleasant graphic designs, I guess you'd call them. So, uh, yep. Did I grab the thing? Yeah, I grabbed the thing. Right, let's go do uh, the next little bit of thing, and then that'll be the end of this one. It is pretty much always worth smashing stuff, because, as I said before, there is secrets. There is one object 
I think it's one. I've never found a second object, but on every level there is one object which, if you smash it, gives you bonus bullets for the minigame at the end of each chapter. So, let's just smash this open as well. Is that enough for a full heart? No, I guess not. So, oh, I remember. I was actually going to grab an item real quick at the shop. Let's get this first. The Crystal Witch and Sage. Within Vigrid City, there are a great many structures built long ago by two clans, the Umbra Witches and the Lumen Sages. Amongst them all have a sun and moon duality, evidence of a peculiar outlook towards the universe, the witches representing the moon and the sages representing the sun, burned into the fabric of the city in various ways. One of these structures, a pair of statues crafted from high-quality crystal known as Belliston Crystalos, featured both a witch and a sage. The statues appeared to hold some sort of special significance. According to ancient records, they were created to aid in the training of the art of overseeing time, a skill only the two clans were capable of practicing that also served as the key to locking something away from public view should the, feel clan <laughs> should the clans feel the need for secrecy. However, the exact details of this art are unknown. Now the city, scarred by the tragic witch hunts of the past, has seen many of the statues depicting witches destroyed or heavily defaced. Even these beautiful crystal statues were unable to escape the calamitous fighting. So there's a lot of inconsistencies in this game, um, or at least in the narrative of this game, and that is just probably the, it's probably not even the first of them, but it's one of them, certainly. Uh, which is that she says something earlier, if you, if you look at all of the things you can look at, uh, she says something about how it doesn't look like anyone, you know, knows that there's that space down there because it would be impossible for a, a human to access the space below the lift because that alloy only works in response to magical power. But um, Antonio clearly made his way down there, and he had a photograph too, pasted into the book. I love that dick joke. You here for business or pleasure? Either way, I'll hook you up. So, Rodan actually has several different lines when you enter the shop, and as far as I can tell, they're completely randomised. Uh, there's none of these yet. The accessories are various passive things that you can add, which do various different special effects. For example, that one gives you the ability to split into a bunch of different people. Um, anime style. This one summons them some things to help you. What does this one do? Uh, it means that instead of having to do, do your dodge timing right, it just automatically triggers dodges, um, provided you have some magic power. That one's why that's listed as hot, by the way. That's a good item for beginning players. But I'm pro, so... Um, we are going to grab the air dodge, because that's incredibly useful. And I think I'm also going to grab... Most of these aren't that useful, and I tend to forget I have them. But the heal slide's quite convenient. So I could also grab an item, but I think I'll keep saving up my rings for now. But yeah, so Rodan has several different lines, and as far as I can tell, they're, they're randomised, and most of them are references to other games. While we're still here, I do want to point out the architecture of this place. Um, Vigrid is, as far as I can tell, pretty heavily inspired by Barcelona, uh, specifically, and um, there is, in the train station at least, and, and some places in the next level as well, a very clear inspiration from the architecture of um, Antonio Gaudi, or Anthony Gaudi rather, who is a very famous architect that you can look up and was notable for having a, this curious organic style to his um, a lot of his work. There's a lot of um, architecture in in Barcelona that is in his style because it was made by him, um, especially these curious organic structures. I'm not going to lie, I've had days like that too. I think most of the enemies in this game have fairly obvious... Wait, hang on. Oh, does she keep those in there? Hmm. 
I guess that's where her guns are when she's not using them. In her hair. Anyway, so... Um, I do think a lot of the designs are actually interesting. However, they do also suffer from a problem, which is that their forms are usually kind of obvious. You know, what have you got? You've got Birdmen for the basic most common angels that you fight over and over and again throughout the game. Well, yeah. It's Birdmen. That's all you got. I don't know what to tell you. It's Birdmen, baby. They all also drop their uh, weapons provided you kill them with a one of these. I do love the trumpets, though. It's kind of an old joke. I'm pretty sure there are, like, Doom-era FPSs. There's, there's at, very, at the very least one Doom-era FPS, which is a... Um, like a Christianized version of Doom. Um, in which you get to have a trumpet, which, if I remember correctly, was fueled by trumps. Which is very funny if you're, like, British and know that that means farts. Which is also very amusing to us, or was very amusing to us, when you guys elected a president fart, but... It kind of rings a bit more hollow after four years of disaster. Can I get a... there we go. It is also a shotgun in this. Anyway, the gag of, you know, the ranged weapon of angels being a trumpet is just quite amusing. Is that all? Oh, no, okay. So yeah, there's, you know, Birdmen as the basic enemies, and then there's, there's these big ogre guys. We will see some weirder angels, but for something that is drawing so heavily on traditional, like, medieval Christian folklore about angels and angelic hierarchies and all of that stuff, it's surprising how few of them are, you know, based on some of the really weird stuff. Uh... These guys are pretty easy to fight. They're big and they have slow attacks, so you can dodge out of the way pretty easily. Unless you're terrible like me. They also have some grab attacks that are a pain in the ass to dodge, so you got to watch out for those. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of this guy pretty much. You might also notice that as you fight them, their armor comes smashing off. That's mostly just a nice visual way to... Oh, hey, this is the first time we see this guy. Yep, it's my boy. So at the end of each boss fight um, and several mini boss fights, there are these uh, finisher moves where you summon a really big demon to eat them. They have more varied and interesting designs than do the angels, I think, for the most part. Um, but yeah, so we've run over a little bit, so that's going to be the end of this episode, definitely. I'm just going to grab this for later. And grab this for right now. And that's going to be all for me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.